David Zritsky for the Bond Experience. Welcome back. I don't know if this gentleman and his face need any introduction. I'm going to do it anyway, because there could be one or two people that don't recognize him. But welcome back to the show, Matt Spazer of Bond Suits. Welcome back. Hey, thanks, David. I'm really glad to be back. Well, it's so wonderful to have you. I feel I feel like every time either you and I are together in person or even doing this, I feel like it's family. I really do. I feel like I'm just having like a, a family reunion. Is that weird? No, I, I, I feel that way too. Good. All right. So I'm not the only crazy one. Now, I've got to address something right away. So I said bond suits, which is so nice and quick and conjugated. You you did have a little bit of a, a conjugation of your channel, didn't you? I did. I So yeah, there, there's been a bit of a rebranding. It's kind of been something I've been thinking about for a very long time, for, for a number of years, and I finally did it. Um, because that's just, it's, it's just an easier way to say it. And I had all my social media channels as bond suits and, and my web address, just, just something shorter is just, I, I just, it's just, I think it just rolls off the tongue faster and it's just, it's just easier to, for people to remember. I've actually, it's funny enough. Um, I've actually been saying it for years just because it is that easy kind of, you know, quick little thing that flows off the tongue. And, and for those that um, don't know bond suits, um, I, I'd love you to describe it. But for me, what I love about bond suits is the remarkable nature of what it's turned into. So literally, and I'm not exaggerating, thousands of bond people, and I don't mean hundreds, I mean thousands, go to your channel, digest the information, research, utilize your hard work before they make a purchase uh, to check on information. Authors use you, reference people use you, uh, social channels use you. I mean, what does that mean to you that that so many people are, use you as a go-to? Yeah, I mean, it's it's really flattering. Uh, I mean, it's what I set out to do. I wanted to create a resource for people to learn about clothes, to a uh, place to find out about what these clothes are, about Bond's clothes, and just about clothes in general. Well, that's that last part is really important. I want to dovetail from that because. Everybody is so used to you being the Bond guy. Um, and, and you really do cover the gamut of all of the movies and all of the actors with a pension to certain actors. We'll get into that. <laughs> but it seems like you've branched out lately. Can you tell me about this? So I have a new Instagram channel um, in addition to my Bond suits, which is I'm going to keep going with that. But uh, now I, I also have a new channel called Suited Details. And uh, it's a place for me just to, to share about clothes that might not have anything to do with James Bond, but they also might have, they also might be Bondian styles of clothing because that, that is still me. But so it's, what did, go ahead. Oh no, so I'm just gonna say it's, it's something that's more about me and my interest in clothes and just about clothes in general, just, just clothes, not, not without any other connection to it. Yeah, you know, there's only, there's only so much that we can talk about with Bond. Eventually, we will hit a, a bit of a wall. And your your Bond suits is so complete. Um, and I'm sure there are other things that you haven't done that you will do. But I love the fact that you kind of broke through those, I'll call them shackles or bonds of Bond, mm -hmm. and have broken free because I think you have so much to say on clothing in general. So are we going to see some similarities between the channels? You know, I, I don't know. Um, I think we're going to see some. We're going to see some of the same clothes. I mean, my clothes, uh, which are, I mean, most of my clothes are Bond inspired in some way. But I, I have other inspirations. It's not just about Bond for me. Um, although kind of a lot of my clothing inspiration comes from some kind of Bond connection, whether it's like, um, other te television shows that starred Bond actors, and that that to me is a, I guess that's one th way that I got into clothes beyond Bond, but it's very similar. It's pretty much almost the same thing. But uh, just, I think history of clothing um, interests me a lot, and that's something I like to explore. Yeah, when we're taping this, um, I did notice today you had a wonderful, beautiful it was so unique in design, um, this 
really, really, I, I, I guess it's, it's antique or vintage uh, tie clip. And it was absolutely beautiful. But what I love that you do, whether it's Bond Suits or this new channel, is you have these wonderful stories of discovery. Like, for example, the, the jacket that you're wearing. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So th this is a jacket that uh, I shared pictures of, pictures of this before. I, I got this jacket on eBay. Um, it kind of reminded me of the uh, jacket that Roger Moore wears on uh, Scaramanga's Island in, in uh, The Man with the Golden Gun. So that was one thing that appealed to me about this jacket, was back to the Bond connection. But I got it because it, uh, it was my size. It was $35. It's uh, a wool silk blend. And uh, I, I, took a, I took a risk on it because there wasn't any brand label in it. I did not know who it made it. But it, had, it has a, a union-made uh, US uh, tag. So it was like, the, that's, that, that's a good sign because it's made in the United States. It's not made in some a country that no one's ever heard of. <laughs> and the, that, that, that helped. And I was like, I, I, I got to get this. So I, I got it. And I mean, it was just perfect. Um, and then um, a number of years later, I was out to dinner with a friend of my dad's. And he, he looks at the jacket. He told me that back in the 70s or 80s, he had the same exact jacket. And he got it at Paul Stewart, which mm -hmm. um, was one of my favorite brands. It's not a Bond brand, but it's one of my favorite brands. Yeah. They have, I think, the best men's window displays in New York City. It's probably some of the best window displays for menswear in the world. Um, so I, um, but I, I was just, you know, what, what, a, what a deal. And it's just perfect. I mean, I, I just, I, I love this jacket. I think it's so cool. I mean, it, it has, you're right, that kind of Bondian moment that's so more, but it's got, I love the stories. I love how you discover these things and, and you fall upon them, but you also do a lot of research. So with your, with your new channel, I mean, what, what can we expect? Is this going to be daily posts, weekly? Oh, well, I mean, I'm going to try, I try to do daily posts on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's life gets in the way and <laughs> but you know, I you know it's like that's something I always want to. I, I always want to try to keep up, you know, keep up Instagram daily when I can. It, yeah, it's uh, so it's. Uh, but you know, I, I have a lot of stuff that I want to share. I love Instagram because for me, it's a quick hit. Even if I have a quick lunch break, and I literally have like, because sometimes this happens, as you know, you have 10, 15 minutes to eat lunch before your next Zoom call. And I'm quickly scrolling through and I can hit that dopamine in my mind of quick visual moments, reading about things. So your channel, I think, is is going to be one of my, you know, wonderful lunchtime or coffee guilty pleasures, oh, which is great. Thanks. So I have a question for you because I was thinking about this discussion today and I'm like, I have so many things that I want to ask Matt because it's been a little bit since you and I have talked. And as I thought about you starting this channel. I wanted to talk about the inspiration because one thing that I've noticed, and I think a part of it is the pandemic and a part of it is no time to die. You know, is it going to be delayed? Probably, um, but certainly it's months and months away and people are getting frustrated. And I've seen a little bit on social media, enthusiasm waning. So there's people that used to post lots of videos, not so much anymore. Those people that used to post lots of stories, not so much anymore. So for you, was this channel a way to keep the enthusiasm of your love of sartorial moments at a heightened level? No, no, I don't. I don't really connect it to a, a, anything that has to do with Bond, but with, with No Time to Die. It's just, I just something else I wanted to do. Um, what I just just wanting to share more about my love of menswear. In, in a more way, in a way that's more about the clothes, because I, I do feel that with the Bond stuff, there is there's always that connection to Bond, and for um, I guess a lot of people, it is about Bond more than it's about the clothes. Mm. Um, you know, some people they they like the clothes just because they want to be more like Bond, and that's always something that I that's some, I mean, that's one way that I feel about it, but it's another way is that is that Bond kind of brought me to the clothes and made me appreciate the clothes for what they are because I'm not Bond I'm I can't be Bond by dressing like him but I can 
use this inspiration to help me, be, you know, be more like myself and to understand what I like. Yeah. I like the fact that it's an implication in the books and certainly in the movies that Bond is a bit finicky. He's very particular about everything, you know, uh, hotels that he stays in, the food and the drink that he consumes and his clothing. And a part of that makes me think like if, if Bond was a real character, he'd probably do the appropriate research on the right clothiers and the right things to wear, I would imagine. Yeah, I think, I, I mean, it depends on, on the incarnation of Bond because we definitely see a lot of different, we see, we see Bond's interest in clothes change a bit throughout the series in the, in the books. You know, Bond is, he definitely knows what he likes with clothes. He doesn't, he seems to not, I mean, he seems to have a you know, good knowledge of different clothes when he talks about some of the, the villain's clothes. Mm. But I know at the same time, I think for himself, he just seems to, to like what he likes. He has kind of like just, just a few things that he likes, only a small handful of different things that he likes to wear. Um, and uh, so, you know, I'm kind of like that in some ways as well. And a lot of us are, you know, we have what we like, you know, you have Daniel Craig loves his Henleys. That's like, that's like one of, one of those, those types of things that's just, you always go to that. Um, but sometimes I feel like trying to dress like Bond um, does limit me in some ways, mm. you know, and I mean, I've never tried to limit myself to purely Bond styles and outfits, but I think sometimes it just, it just, it, there is that that kind of desire to want to dress like Bond. Mm. And sometimes I, I kind of, one reason why I started this new channel is to help myself break away from that, is to help myself kind of think outside of the Bond box and to th think in a different way. I like that. I think that's the name of an Instagram, the Bond box. I don't know <laughs> what you talk about. Maybe it's like packaging of Bond. <laughs> <laughs> There's a yeah, channel that, for everything. There is. But, but you know, there, there is that Bond does box us into some things. And I, I, I think uh, I, I don't want to feel limited by Bond. E even though, you know, there, there's, you can always just take Bond and expand from that. Yeah. I want to get your opinion on something because dressing like Bond or even using Bond as a, an inspiration or a template, I've, I have a theory and I want you to be very comfortable in debating this theory with me, or you can agree. But in the last, I would say four months especially, I've noticed that before that, there was a lot of excitement with No Time to Die, and people were trying to figure out what everything was and what's the long green trench coat and what's the bluey, you know, Matera, you know, uh, linen blue jacket he wears in Italy. And... I've seen something happen in the last four months that I think is very interesting and I think you might love. And that is I'm noticing young and old, people are actually gravitating more towards the classic heritage Bond clothing, the, the Thunderball type clothing, the camp collar shirts, but even the Roger Moore stuff, like the black you know, airport shirt. I mean, everybody's clamoring yeah. for that. And I'm hearing like the white Henleys and things like that, the Daniel Craig, um, well, let's call it experimental type clothing that you wouldn't normally think of the traditional Bond mm. seems to be growing quieter. Have you seen that as well? No, I have seen some of that. Um, I think, um, I don't know exactly why. Now, um, I, I would probably thank Olabar Brown for a lot of that. Olabar Brown has done a great job at, uh, um, you're bringing some of these old Bond styles to the, the mainstream fashions. You know, um, I've I've been loving my my uh, you know my 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 blue camp shirt from Orbar Brown, you know, the Thunderball shirt that that uh, I got this year, and that's something I've been wearing. You know, I've been wearing that one a lot because it's that's like it's like it's a resort shirt, but at the same time, the dark color makes it something that I can kind of wear around the city. So I'm loving that one. But, um, you know, I think one reason why people might be interested in some of these older Bond styles is that they're kind of more interesting. I, I think there's more to them. I think they're, they're more creative. You know, the, the Henley, is, there's only so much you can do with the Henley. Henleys, 
you know, most handlings are quite similar to one another. I guess I guess it is a very it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a specific style, but they're always in the same type of fabric, you know, the same cut. There's not as much you can do with them. Whereas, um, let me say, like camp shirts, you can have those in all different, many different colors, many different types of fabrics. So it's it's a versatile thing. I think I think there's a lot more. There, there can be a lot more creativity with some of these other old-fashioned types types of clothes, I suppose. That's a really good point. I mean, the the variety is so there because you know there was a time where everybody and their aunt Tallulah were ordering a blue polo, whether it was Sunspell or not. They wanted a Daniel Craig polo where their biceps were popping. You know, that was like the big <laughs> gravitational pull. Um, even today, I saw no less than three channels, and these are relatively, um, I would say, the younger zone of the sartorial uh, Bond community showing off their camp collared shirts. And it, I don't know, I got excited. I mean, you know I love that type of genre. And I think more and more people are even screaming out for like more safari looks, which is more, oh, yeah. more and more, which is oh, amazing. Yeah. And I think that it's it's been an interesting, dare I say, evolution of discussion and where people are gravitating. So I'm, it it's it's been wonderful to see. Yeah, there, there's I think there's, there's there's a lot of Bond style, even you know going back to you know to Doctor No, you you have some very simple things, things that. Unless you like look, unless you have like a like a like a very good eye and you know, for the details, you know, a gray suit doesn't look all that interesting to everyone. Whereas you look at Roger Moore's stuff, you look at some of these safari jackets, and they're creative items. You know, these clothes are creative; they're not what you you expect to see. And I think people want something different. I agree. I agree. All right, so. I just mentioned, you know, consuming all these different social channels. You had a wonderful quote on one of your From Taylors With Love podcasts with uh, our good friend Pete Brooker, where he was mentioning all these different podcasts and channels. And you just said in a very droll, perfectly Matt Spazer way, Pete, I, I don't got time for all this. Meaning the influx has oh, been yeah. seismic of the amount of stuff. But what do you think? I mean, what do you think of all of these social channels, whether it's Instagram or podcasts, cropping up, talking about the sartorial nature of Bond? What's your opinion? Well, I mean, I'm really happy that people are interested in it. Um, now, um, I, you know, I like it when someone has something very unique to say about about the uh, the style. Um, but you know, I, I think that one reason why they have been so, you know, it has been such a popular topic now is. You know, we do have you know companies like N Peel and Oliver Brown who are doing their best to bring attention to Bond style to these you know all kinds of uh, you know items and that that I, I think I think they have something to do with it. I think they are you know because the, this this official Bond branded clothes brings brings um it brings it to the attention of a lot of Bond fans that might not have noticed the clothes before. People. And, and take this for the compliment that it is. People see you as one of the quintessential experts. You've earned the right, so just drink it in and don't be humble. But you are. So I think the audience watching this right now would be very interested in knowing what Matt Spazer likes to consume as far as social channels. What are the Instagrams? What are the people that you like to follow and why? And you can name just a couple if you want. You know, I mean, I whenever I see you know a Bond style channel pop up on Instagram, I'm going to follow it, of course, because I want to see what everyone has to say about the topic. Um, but you know, I, I I I do I like it when people find something um, you know unique to do with the clothes. I mean, I I love seeing you know what what Harris does with dressing like Bond because he he does lots he does creative things. Mm -hmm. Like like I really liked it when he was. Um, you know, when he, he kind of he he got these um you know he got he got two navy ties from Benson and Clegg and he was kind of showing them off with different outfits, yeah. you know how they work with different outfits. That's something to me that I find really interesting, because that that is not about Bond itself. Those are about that's about the clothes and it's mm -hmm. it's about taking Bond style and doing something with it, doing something unique with it, rather than just showing a picture of Daniel Craig and saying what he's wearing, you know, um, to me, I, I mean, I already know what he's wearing. 
and I, I've heard it all, and I, I'm so I, I'm not that interested in that. I, I'm not so interested in all the budget bond things. Um, that's that's not really for me. I mean, I, I mean, I, I like buying clothes on a budget for sure. It's just that, it's just that the way that I guess just seeing the way that that kind of stuff doesn't. I don't know. It doesn't excite me. I, 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 for me, I'm always, I always want to look at the best clothes, kind of like the, the just, uh, you know, that's what Bond does. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to find out what the best is so I can learn about the best and then figure out my own way from there. So I'm kind of following some more, you know, other um, just menswear channels and, uh, you know, ones that focus on doing things the best that they can. I like that. I like that because it's very, it's still part of the bond tenets of the best of the best and having something that's very capable. You know, it's those two characteristics that you can follow. All right. So I, I, I asked you a question about the positive, but I'm going to ask you a question about the negative. Now I'm not going to ask you to name names, but there has to be things that you see, uh, whether it's the way people wear clothes or when they buy a suit, people are doing something wrong. You know, you've told me, I mean, you and I are very, very good friends. I said, we're family. And yeah. you've said to me, you do better when you wear something that isn't like painted on you, David, you know, like Daniel Craig uh, looks better when he has not something that's too tight. So what do you think, what are some of the mistakes that men are still making with fashion and style? You know, for, for me, dressing well means dressing with reason. Dress, you need a reason to wear what you're wearing. And um, that comes from, for me, that comes from my background in graphic design. When I, you know, when I went to university for graphic design, I would create some designs and I have to present them to my class. And I had to have a reason for every decision I made you know, at the smallest decisions, if whenever you know, some people would point out, they point out something and ask me, why did I do that? Why is it that color? Why is it something, you know, you know, why is that placed over there? Why is it that size and not bigger or smaller? And so I, I'm, I'm taking that and I apply that to clothes. And what the mistakes I see people make is when they can't explain why they made a, dis that, a certain decision, why they're just following a trend, you know, people, people follow trends um, that without knowing why, without, they just want to follow the trends to, to, to do that. They want to, they, they might wear something because maybe they like it, which is a good reason. But I think it's important to know why, why do you like that? I think it's always good to have to question yourself and then find the answers. So to me, that is where people make mistakes when they don't have the answer to all of these, to any question you might ask them. To me, that is when to master dressing well, you need to know why. I love that. Uh, by the way, that was a much more philosophical answer. I thought you were going to get very tactile, no, but it, I like that. Yeah, you know, but I, I think there's, there's because... I mean, there, there are lots of small things that, that are trendy right now that I see people doing that I can't stand. Like, say, um, right now it's very trendy to wear pretty much any type of shoe without socks. Like, like when I see people wearing, you know, it's one thing to wear loafers without socks. But when people were wearing brogues without socks, they're, wearing, they're dressing up in a double-breasted suit, wearing brogues, but no socks. That really bothers me. But, and I'm, I want to know, why are they doing that? I mean, because everyone is doing that on Instagram. So are they just doing that just to follow the trend? Do they have a good reason for doing that? Because to me, there's, I can't think of a good reason to do that. Right. Just, because, just because you can do something never means that you should do it. Can I, can I um, let you in on a, a little like pet peeve of mine that I've been noticing? I, I've been I've been seeing people they'll get something in the mail obviously because they're not typically going to stores nowadays and they'll literally put on the on the clothing and wear it um, no washing no ironing no steaming and I see it so often and literally you can see the folding lines <laughs> of people going mm -hmm. out and I'm like you bought this wonderful thing just go that little extra step of of taking care of it and 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 taking and thinking about the why behind your appearance and steam that thing. 
Oh, or, yeah. or do something to have a little bit of care around it. Yeah. Now, I mean, some people do like to have their shirts folded after they, some people bring them to their shirts, you mm -hmm. know, to have them laundered at the cleaners and they have them brought back in, in a, you know, in a folded uh, bag. Some people like that. Um, and that is kind of a style and it's a, in its own sense. But for me, you know, I mean, I'd wash all of my own shirts and I iron all of my own shirts and I, I hang them up so there's no creases in them. I, I, I like, I just, you know, you don't see that in Bond shirts. Even, even if Bond has his shirt packaged up, when he puts it on, it looks like perfect. It's perfect. Do you steam any of your clothing? I don't use steamers too much. I might just use like a little steam from the iron to freshen up a few things, but yeah. um, for the most part, steaming menswear doesn't accomplish a whole lot. Yeah. It, it is, um, I, I found it frustrating. It, it works on a couple of um, shirt applications, but steaming in general, it can be yeah. very, very frustrating. Yeah, it can work, it can work on knitwear, on a polo. Yeah. Th that's where it can work, but it's not going to get the wrinkles out of your, out of your um, fine Turnbull and Asser shirt. And uh, if you put steam on trousers, you're not going to have a, a nice crease pressed down the, the middle of the leg or and with a jacket, if you try to steam a jacket, it can sometimes, if you put the seam in the wrong place, it can just burst open the seam and then you have a really messy seam. Yeah, agreed. So, so um, all right. Now we talked about steaming. Who knew we were gonna go that deep on these types of things? But here we go. I've got two questions for you. And, and I like to call this portion of our discussion, the Pete Brooker portion of our discussion. Uh, number one, I haven't seen in a long time Pete Brooker's A View to a Kill, All of Our Brown, beloved track jacket. Do you think he destroyed it like he destroys much of his clothing? <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a possibility. He has not told me anything about it. I haven't seen it. I'm just saying. Mm, I don't know. I mean, it hasn't been, you know, the weather for it exactly, but he's very thin. Maybe he gets cold on the inside. I haven't seen him gravitate. Yeah, they, they've had some cooler days in London recently, as along with the hot, very hot ones. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think there's something there. And then the second question is, and I think I know the answer, in Pete's Instagram, especially his Instagram, do you think he has too much Roger Moore in there? Oh, no, you can never have too much Roger Moore. And by Roger Moore, I mean his dog. Roger oh, Moore. yeah, no, no, you can never have too much of, of Roger the uh, cockapoo, I think. I think he's a poop cock. No, you're right, a <laughs> cockapoo. That's right. That's right. All right, that's good to know. And then those were just quick hits I just had to serve out from, from that. I'm going to move because, again, this is, this is my opportunity. And I, by the way, I warned Matt. I said, I have a smattering of questions. They're not all going to be fashion. This one is not fashion related or style related because Matt's bigger than that. All right, you know, you follow, you can't avoid it. The whole discussion that there is a potential that No Time to Die may be delayed further to 2021, probably for all the right reasons, of course. In your opinion, the whole idea of video on demand versus theater where do you stand i mean if you had some sort of control would you just say to ian look i, I just want to see the damn movie give it to me i'll pay 22 bucks for it and i'll just watch it or do you want to wait until you know june july of 2021 and see it in a theater yeah it's a hard choice to make um i i would be i i, I kind of would like to see it i i think i would go with the video on demand and go for it sooner than later. But I think at this point, it doesn't even matter. I, 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 I don't think it matters right now. Um, I think because they've, they've waited this long. Um, it's really only us like diehard Bond fans that are killing, you know, we, we, we feel just like heartbroken over this. But the majority of the film audience, film goers out there, they, they, they forgot about the film. They, 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 so if it came out, you know, if, if it comes out uh, on video on demand later this year, or if it comes out two years from now, I don't think it's going to make a difference. I think it's only, 
you know, it's just, it's annoying the diehard Bond fans, but the majority of the audience, it's, they, they, if they think they'll make a lot more money if they wait, then that's the right decision. I like that. I think that's a good attitude. All right, Matt, we're going to, we're going to, you're a creative individual. You have to be for what you do, uh, both vocationally and your hobby. We're going to get a little creative with you, and I want to play a little bit of a fantasy game for you. All right. So Eon gets in touch with you and says, look, Matt, we're putting together a, a bit of a Justice League from a, from a fashion and style standpoint. Um, the brands that have really contracted with us, and you can name them, you know, accessories, uh, shoe companies, luggage companies, sweater companies, mm -hmm. resort companies, you know the name, you know the number. We'd like you to be actually part of our focus group. And they're really wondering, what does the Bond fan, what is the Matt Spazers of the world, what do they want from us? What are those, what's that wish list that you have that I wish somebody would come out with these types of things? Oh, so you mean like Bond related things? Bond related. Yeah. You know, um, I think I just want to see um, pretty much anything from past eras that people have forgotten about, uh, which is something that I love that, that Oliver Brown and Peel have done, brought back outfits that lots of people forgot about and have made them popular. Now, um, I think just so many of my favorite Bond looks don't, um, wouldn't actually um, really work for, for this though. Mm. Because, you know, just like the fine suits, those, those are my, that, that's what I love about Bond's looks. It's, it's the suits and maybe, you know, the, the shirts from Frank Foster or Trumbull and Asser. Those are things that I'm just, you know, I, I love those things and I, I have a hard time picturing those being like released as Bond products. Mm -hmm. A lot of those. Like and, putting those uh, into the yeah. mainstream and things like that. Right. Because it, it, it doesn't work. I think, you know, and, you know, to say like to copy out, you know, copy what, what you know, some of the suits that, that Connery, Lazenby, Moore wore. Those types of suits, those, from, you know, as I've learned more and more about how tailoring works over the years, you know, I can understand why that those are not suits that are made like, in, and ready to wear. You know, you, those are those styles, the way that they're cut for the person wearing them, and just the amount of effort that goes into making those, it doesn't make sense. Now, I mean, they are on the, I'd say Tom Ford suits are on that level. Mm. So you can do that. But Tom, what Tom Ford has going for them is that they can make, you know, a no time to die suit and sell it because there are a lot of people currently interested in that. And I think you're going to have fewer people who want, you know, a, uh, a Roger Moore Cyril Castle suit mm. made to those standards. I mean, may, maybe, you know, if someone wants to make a suit with those, um, with, with those flared link cuffs that his, uh, his jackets have, I, I love those. That is something that I want to have made for me one day. I've, I've had some jackets modified to have that, but it's, doesn't really work so well. You, you need to have a suit made for those. But these, some of these things that I love are just so specific. They're so, so, and some of them are kind of of their time. Yeah. And it's just, the stuff that I love is not mainstream at all. What about the uh, the powder blue outfit that uh, Moore wears in Live and Let Die? Yeah, that's he's, Pete's uh, thing. Canoodling <laughs> with Rosie. Oh, that's Pete's. That's not that, That's okay. all Pete. Pete. Pete really wants that. And I, I would, I would be interested to see that made, but I, I mean, and I, I guess if Orvar Brown made it, I'm sure they'd sell it. It's just, just the, the things that they were able to sell, especially from their, that, um, that second bond collection with, with, the, with the, you know, the onesie, yeah. you know, they were able to sell things that everyone made fun of for years. People would, would make fun of so many of those clothes and then they bring them out. And all of a sudden, people love them. Yeah, you know, it's oh, absolutely. It, and you, I, I, actually, I love the, seeing that. Would you wear the? Um, now I'm just kind of throwing things against the wall, but I'm just curious. Would you wear the yellow uh, pajama set and robe set from Live and Let Die that Moore wears with the slippers? 
You know, I, I do like that. I think that is a, that is really cool. I mean, I would want my own initials, in, you know, uh, embroidered onto them. But some people actually would just would want the JB embroidered onto them. That 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 would work for John Broden. It would. That would be natural. I he could, would look I like could a see him, poser. He'd, he'd be great in that. That's true. I, I I tell you, I have, like you. For me, I've got very strange ones. Like I've been hankering, craving even for the pants that um, Moore wears in, again, Live and Let Die in the airport scene. So he's got the black shirt and he's got those pants. They're kind of like, um, almost like a, a yellowish beige. Oh, yeah. And um, they're they're beautiful. You know, they've got uh, just beautiful lines to them, but they do flare out. They do. Yeah, and you know, I think, you know, like that kind of action, that kind of, those kind of clothes do influence me a lot because I, I see, I see these things and I see how, you know, I might do them a little differently. You know, you know, one thing that, um, um, ju like, like almost all of Moore's trousers throughout the Bond series do not have side pockets. That's right. They don't have that. They don't, um, they don't even have, they don't have like any useful front pockets. Mm. They have these little slits sewed into the top of the waistband that you can see him reach into that when he um, arrives at the Peninsula Hotel in The Man with the Golden Gun. He reaches into this tiny cash pocket, is what they call them. Um, it's a little bigger than a coin pocket, but it's like he reaches into that to grab you know, a coin out of it. And I, I, I see those and I'm like, they look great because you know they just look so clean on him. But I'm like, lines, I, yeah. I use I use those pockets. I, I need pockets. Yeah. So, but but you know what? What those the color of those trousers is great. It's, it, it it they look really nice with the black shirt. But you could wear them with so many different kinds of shirts. Is he wearing loafers in that? It's hard to tell from the he naked is. eye. Yeah, they're 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 Gucci. Oh, they are Gucci loafers. He's wearing Gucci loafers in that. The horse bit ones or just yeah, the... um, those. I believe that scene has the horse bit. In Live and Let Die, he wears horse bit loafers and he wears some tassel loafers that are from a, um, I don't know who made the tassel loafers. But um, I believe with that, he's wearing some uh, Gucci horse bit loafers. That's amazing. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna end this with one big question. And mm -hmm. it's really, it's, it's about your future. I mean, it's really about kind of like, what do you want to do? But, you know, you've already branched off into a, a second Instagram, which you talked about earlier, which, you know, we're going to follow rapidly, of course. But do you have like a bigger vision? I mean, are there things that you still want to do that are undone? Yeah, there, there's, there's always stuff that I want to do. And I'm always doing stuff. I'm, there's just so much I want to do, so many things that I'm interested in. And uh, it's hard to say, though. It's really hard to say what I want to do next. It's, I, I often I just kind of I find my way, you know, mm. doing something. I, I find, I find uh, I just find myself doing something new, and or I'm doing something that it leads me to doing something else. Um, that's no, the that's, creative spark. What you're what you're describing is literally the, It's what gets me up sometimes at three in the morning. It's suddenly suddenly something whirls. And it hasn't been pre-planned, but it's it sparks something else. Yeah, I think that happens a lot to me. I'm just sometimes like I, I read something about menswear, and I'm like, and I'm like, I, I really don't agree with that at all. So I'm gonna go I go I go and write something um, about about that topic uh, from my own point of view, and I, I just do a lot of that. I, I see things that I, I don't like, and I want to do something better. I love that. Great attitude. Matt, thank you very much for spending time with us today. Really oh, appreciate it. Thank you, David. Well, this has been David Zeritsky for The Bond Experience. We're going to see you real soon. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from The Bond Experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be 
up on the latest from the bond experience just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel you're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content and by the way speaking of content here's something especially for you just because we know you talk to you soon